Welcome and thank you for joining us for the online encounter. Whether you're joining us from Omaha or anywhere in any part of the world, we want you to know that you're part of the Love Church family and we're glad that you're here. Make sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications for our channel so that you never miss a message from Love Church. Now grab your Bibles and let's get started. Pray. Let's get into this. God, thanks for this family, this family room, all of our new friends that are joining us thinking of all the folks that were baptized today. Man, thinking of Gracie as she was baptized, my heart, my, my heart like skipped a beat with expectancy of what you're gonna do in this young woman's life. Seeing anointing on Dave, just, just so grateful what you're doing. And now as we shift into this time to study your word. We pray, God, for fresh manna from heaven. God, that you would speak a practical and clear encouragement and challenge to us, and we'll respond. We'll respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, have you ever been around that guy, that girl? You know the one that at school or at work, like you're walking in the hallway and you're like, oh, kind of do one of these numbers. You see him and you're like, oh, anybody? No, maybe just me, okay. Um, or when they're calling your phone, you're like, not now. And you immediately send them to voicemail. Anybody, you know what I'm talking about? That, that guy, that gal. Um, it's funny, as a preacher, I am that guy sometimes. And I'll find myself, I'll be like at the gym or somewhere and someone will like see me. They'll be like, oh crap, hopefully you didn't see me. And they'll start like walking the other way. I'm like, I'm really not here to beat you with a Bible. I'm just here to love you. You know, like I... that guy. Today in our text in the book of Numbers, you're gonna see a challenge to us as God has this conversation with Moses, Moses is trying to lead God's people to the promised land. And along the journey, you're gonna see that guy, that girl, the Israelites. And there's three keys that I want us to be aware of and not to be that guy. You guys ready for them? Number one, don't be a complainer. Jot it down real quick, don't be a complainer. And I think we just taught this a couple months ago, so God must be wanting to speak to us in this church. God spoke to me clearly on this. Number two, uh, don't be that guy, don't be a critic. And all you consultants, uh, you have a great gift, but your backside weakness is you're very critical. I know, because I'm one of them. Sometimes you walk into the place and you're like just judging it from the jump. You, you must be one, because you're laughing. Okay, that's good, good. So this, this will speak to you as it did to me. And then number three, here it is, you guys ready? God's gonna, God's gonna be upset because his people were cowards. Oh, don't be a coward. Don't be that guy. Don't, don't be that girl. Don't be a coward. You see, remember, God had a promised land for his people, the land of Canaan. It was a land, what, flowing with milk and honey. It was an amazing place, and God said, I have already done it. All you have to do is walk in it. You just gotta walk to the promised land, and you're gonna see towards the end, and you guys already read it in number 13, what did they do? Because of unbelief, they came back with a bad report and they missed out on what God wanted to do in and through their life. And I believe someone came to church today, you've been walking in complacency and maybe a little bit of coward and God's gonna challenge you. He's gonna say, I don't want you to miss out on all I have for you. Let's start now with number one, this whole idea of being a complainer. Let's Let's see uh, how God feels about it. Uh, chapter 11, Numbers 11, starting in verse one. You guys ready? Say, I'm ready. Soon the people began to what? They began to complain about their hardship. And the Lord, <laughs> the Lord heard everything they said. Isn't that funny? Like God hears everything we say. Yikes, that's convicting. Then the Lord's anger blazed against them and he sent a fire to rage among them and he destroyed some of the people in the outskirts 
of the camp. Isn't it interesting, the outskirts? There's, I think there's a lot of people that they come to Christ, but then they kind of keep a foot in the world and then a foot in Jesus. It's like they're in the outskirts, and it's like, sing, these guys get singed in the outskirts. Be careful. Then the people screamed to Moses for help. And when he prayed to the Lord, the fire stopped. I love good leaders that no matter how... Um, of a Debbie Downer people are that you're leading at times that they'll still pray for them. Some humility, we'll see that in a second. Fire stopped as he prayed. After that, the area was known as Tabera, which means the place of burning because fire from the Lord had burned among them there. How does God feel about complainers? That guy, not so good, he's, he's burning people up. I was like, oh man. Let me ask you a question. What have you been complaining about lately? What have I been complaining about lately? Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna guess, how many live here in Omaha? Okay, you're, you live here, raise your hand real quick. I'm, I'm gonna make a calculated uh, guess that you, like me, have been complaining about something in particular the last week and a half. Okay, let me ask you, let me ask you a different question. How many here have not complained about the wind here this, this last week? Anybody raise your hand? See? See, not one of you, right? So we're all in the same boat. This stinking north wind, really, if it wasn't for the, it could be 20 degrees if it just wasn't for the wind. Ah! And there's a war in Russia. We're complaining about stinking north wind. Anybody? Okay, so we're all, are we all in this together finally? Okay, good. We're all, we're, complainer. Um, I was complaining about something the other day. God spoke to me, man. It, we, We've been um, nomads for like six months and we finally moved into this awesome new house. It's great. And like the second day we're in it, I have this little Italian greyhound dog. We call him Ding. And Ding didn't like the wind either. So instead of dropping that two spot outside, homie came inside (laughs) and rocked it right in the middle of the new floor. Talk about fire from heaven, dude. I wish I had fire from heaven to zing the ding right there. I could go on and on about, it's funny as a preacher, it's like you're reading the Bible, you're like, yeah, go give it to the people. And then God's like, "Uh uh-huh, how are you doing in the area? Talk about first world problems, man. All kinds of first world problems. Happening, and I, and I find myself complaining, and God's like, man, I, no, don't be that guy, Todd. Don't be that guy. We got something completely different. So they complain about their circumstances. It's getting tough. They're like on this extended camping trip. It's getting dicey, and they have another reason they're complaining. Look at verse four. So then the foreign rabble who are traveling with the Israelites began to crave the good things of Egypt. Okay, pause there real quick. Did you, when you read that, were you like, foreign rabble, what the heck is that? Anybody raise your hand real quick? Okay, let me tell you, it's good. Three people read it, and you're, I'll tell you what it means. <laughs> so remember now, God's chosen people in, in bondage in Egypt. When they left, there were some people that weren't Israelites that were like, woohoo, promised land. I'll go along for the ride, seems cool. So what happened was you had intermingling with God's people to the promised land, people that weren't God's people, intermingled in them, and now they started looking back to Egypt and going, oh, look at all the great stuff we're missing out on. Isn't that an interesting picture of us as Christians, and now we allow people in our life that say they're going that way, but they're really looking back to the old days. Remember when we used to party, man? You used to come back, let's go do that. And now what happens is we start walking, and then we start turning because of the foreign rabble that's complaining about, oh, we miss out on what we used to eat in Egypt. They forgot about the whips and chains that were over their back as they were in slavery. Look at what their complaint says. They said, and the people of Israel also began to complain. So again, the foreign rabble begins to complain. They follow suit. It's like a spirit of complaining is now induced into them. And they start complaining as well. And listen, listen to the complaint. Oh, for some meat, they exclaimed. Give me a double-double. I'm tired of the manna cotty. Remember manna? Remember that God provided them, like miraculously, you know, this dew from heaven came down 
and, and they would pick it up and it tasted, it was like Krispy Kreme donuts, but it had the nutritional value of like grilled chicken and broccoli. It was like amazing and God, but it was every day. And he's like, I'm, they're, I'm tired of this. Give me a burger. We remember the fish we used to eat for free in Egypt. Was it really free? These guys were shackled. They were building Pharaoh's like towns. It wasn't free. I don't know about you, if I'm really honest, sometimes I'll buy the lie that God is holding out on me. And what I used to do felt so good. If I could go back to that, it would be fulfilling. And there's this lie the enemy starts playing. That's what's happening here. You don't remember the next day after, after the party, the unplanned pregnancy or the, the hangover? You don't remember that. Oh, we don't remember that, I forgot. We had all the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions. I don't even like onions, so I'm good there. And garlic we wanted. But now our appetites are gone. All we ever see is what? The darn manna, the manna bread, all this kind of stuff, that's all I see. And they continue to be miserable and complain. How would the leader do, by the way? Moses, put yourself in the story, by the way. You're Moses. You didn't sign up for the job, but God told you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick you, Moses. Remember, he tried to back down, too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you lead my people to the promised land, out of Egypt, and I'm gonna send them to this promised land. And Moses, you're, you're the guy for the job. And there's like a couple million people. <laughs> and all he hears is like this whining and complaining. Anybody a leader and like that's all you hear your kids? Why do we gotta eat this again? You're like, really, fire from heaven? Okay, is he, no, it's okay. You're not, not like that. Moses hears it. Skip down to verse 10. Let's, let's see how Moses handles this. Moses heard all the families standing in the doorway of their tents whining. We used to have a no wine zone, like, when our kids were growing up, nope. But that, you want the rod? <laughs> Zero whining. Just make it sting and you don't have to deal with that. Okay, all right, just, just parenting 101. And the Lord became extremely angry. So he did, don't be that guy. Don't be the whiner, the complainer. He, he got angry. Moses was also very aggravated. Wouldn't you be if you're, if you're the leader of these people? Moses got very aggravated. Moses said to the Lord, why are you treating me, your servant, so harshly? Have mercy on me. What did I do to deserve all the burden of these people here? Did I give birth to them? Did I bring them into the world? Why did you tell me to carry them in my arms like a mother carries a nursing baby? How can I carry them to the land you swore to give their ancestors? Where am I supposed to get meat for all these people? They keep whining to me saying, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all. These people by myself, the load is far too heavy. You ever been in that position just like Moses? It's too much. I can't do it. I'm, I'm running out of energy. These people are too much. By the way, if you feel that way, go to the Lord. It's a perfect place to bring your burden. <laughs> 15, I, when I read 15, I was chuckling because I can relate to Moses sometimes. He says, if this is how you intend to treat me, just go ahead and kill me. Wow, Mo. Someone say meltdown. Okay. Uh, he said, do me a favor and spare me this misery. Moses, his ministry became a misery. And he's had it. He's at its wit, his wit's end. Side note, by the way, teenagers, kids, don't bring your parents to this point, please. <laughs> And all the parents said, amen. amen. There's a leadership lesson I learned years ago. It was a quote. I forget who said it. I wish I did. And they said this, if you live for people's compliments, you'll die by their complaints. And Moses, I feel like this, at this place, he's dying. He's like, for real, just kill me now, dude. I'm tired of these people. And it's complain, it's complain, it's complain. And God's like, okay, I'll answer, I'll answer the people. And if you read the rest of the chapter, like you did this week, because you guys are good Bible students and you want to get to know God better every day in your own Bible, you read the rest of it. God answered the prayer. Do you guys remember what he did? 
First of all, he says, okay, Mo, I'm gonna send 12 leaders to help you with this burden. You, you're right, you can't do it on your own, which was very similar to Exodus 18 when Jethro told him, hey man, you can't do it, you're gonna burn yourself out, delegate, right, delegate, elevate. He's doing the same thing here in a spiritual sense. So he does that, cool, 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 cool. Then he said, These, your people want meat? I'll give them some meat. And Moses is like, well, there's no way. We're we gonna slaughter all of our cattle. Like, you, we're gonna, the fish of this. We're called a couple million people. What are we gonna do? He's like, I got it. Don't worry about it. And God sends, what did he do? Remember? Quail into the camp. It's like they were, um, what, do you, what do you call when a bird goes? They're migrating. And they, they were flying so long, they get tired. And it says that they like were in the camp, like, like all these stinking birds, all these fowls. And, and it said that, that all the people had to do was take their club and they, they, they migrated. They were so tired, they just kind of flew about belt high. And in the New King James, it actually says the, the, the Israelites, the lowest amount that they actually gathered of quail was 10 homers, which is equivalent to a certain amount of gallons, which was a lot of food. Homers, belt high, club. I was like, oh, okay. They would just whoop, just whack these quails, like wring their neck and start chowing. Which reminded me when I was a kid, you remember going into the backyard with a baseball bat and the, it was dark and the little lightning bugs kind of flew and you would just do one. Anybody? Sorry, okay, pastor confession. Sorry, those little, poor little guys. God was like, you want meat? I'll give you meat. And, and he gave them so much at the end of the month I'm not gonna give it to you today, week, whatever, a whole month. And they got so sick of it, they, the quail was coming out of their nostrils. I was reading that, I was like, oh my, that's totally how the flesh works. I crave something that from Egypt, my old life, and then I go back to it, and I'm so sick of it, though, because I indulge my flesh, and I'm like, that is gross. Thank God for the time of my life and the times of my life. God's like, okay, you wanna, you wanna try to fulfill yourself in, in, in your physical cravings? Go ahead, buddy. And at the end of it, <laughs> it feels good in the moment, and then, <sighs> I'm tired of this. That's when I first came to Christ. I, I had indulged my, like, my entire flesh life, and I'm like, I'm done with it. I am sick of it. It's like it was coming out of my nose no longer. Gives it to him because of complaint. Now, let me give you a, just a quick practical challenge. God spoke to me on this. Anybody like practical challenges in here? Raise your hand. I know Aldo does. You guys ready for it? Okay, when you find yourself complaining, when I find myself complaining, here it is. Look for an opportunity. Look at the complaint or whatever, the circumstance. Instead of complaining, look at it as an opportunity to grow. I'll give you an example. You, you want a first world uh, circumstance. So I told you I just moved into a new house and I ordered this, this power, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like an L couch or whatever. What do you call those things? Sectionals. There he goes. And it came to my house. They delivered it to my house. And one of the section had no power in it. I'm like, well, everybody's going to put their feet up except for the people that are, <laughs> are in the middle. And I called them, hey, can you send an exchange? Give me a power one. They're like, yeah, no problem. So they came and uh, this, this dude, super hardworking guy, God put it on my heart, give him 100 bucks. It was awesome, cool. So I get it, and I open it up. It didn't have power again. So they replaced the non-power sec section with a non-power. Talk about, someone say first world problems. Yes. And I looked at it as an opportunity. And I called, and I said, hey, just so you know, the one you were supposed to bring with power had no power again. And, you know, man, we all make mistakes, it's all good. And I asked God to just give me the ability to love on this lady. Customer service people, let's give it up for customer service people, by the way. <laughs> Holy smokes. So here's, here's your practical challenge. So by God's grace, you know, um, wasn't, wasn't, you know, complaining. I just said, you know, we need to fix it, whatever. And by the end of the call, she said, what's your email? And it's funny because it says, you know, such and such at love church. I'm like, man, thank God that I didn't lose my cool there. <laughs> You're the pastor, right? But it was really cool. She said, no, I wanted to get your email because thank you for not complaining. I'm gonna give you a $100 gift card to the furniture store that you bought this from. 
And don't think that I'm sweet because I've probably blown it many times as well. This happens to be. And the reason I wanted to share that, it's so cool. It's not just about complaining and use it as an opportunity to grow, but also generosity. This is the heartbeat of our church. Always look for opportunities to give. And I'm not saying that to puff me up, please, please. But listen, I just gave homie, hardworking homie, 100 bucks. They gave me 100 bucks right after that. You just can't outgive God. It's, yeah, you, there's some people that actually understand that. It's so cool. So live in that. Okay, no complaining, opportunity to grow. Number two, critic. And I'm gonna be brief with this one because I wanna get to um, the coward part. So critic, don't be that guy, don't be that girl. Verse 12, or chapter 12, verse one. Look what this says. Now, while they were at Hazaroth, Miriam and Aaron, so if you're not familiar, that's uh, Moses' brother and sister. What did they do? They... They criticized, right there, they crit everybody say criticize. They criticized Moses because he had married a Cushite woman. So apparently Zipporah had died or whatever. Something happened and he marries this, this Cushite woman. And they said, has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Hasn't he spoken through us too? <laughs> but the Lord, what did he do? He heard them. And I love verse three. Now Moses was very humble, more humble than any other person on earth. You know who wrote numbers? <laughs> Moses. <laughs> Every time I read that, I'm like, dude, that is awesome, man. You must be especially like humble if you can write that and be genuine about it. <laughs> when I was studying this, I was thinking, are they really upset that he married a Kushite woman? Or are they really upset because they're really envious and jealous of Moses' position? Do you know God puts people in position for a reason, for a season? And what is our job? Our job is to submit and follow with humility, not look at them envious, talking about, oh, must be nice to have what they have. Our job is not to, be, is to follow. You know, it's interesting. The best leaders I know are the best followers. So... How does God feel about it? He uh, calls like a family meeting. It's so, I, I always hated these when I was little, when I got in trouble. And my parents would call me into the kitchen. One time I was, I snuck out and I was, uh, I think in eighth grade, and we were smoking Marlboro Reds and like driving around at three in the morning. And, and it was like my man, Mark. And I was driving his sister's truck, everything was cool. And then he, he's like, I wanna drive. So he's driving. And as we're, we're turning, a cop is coming down. It's like three in the morning. A cop's coming, and Mark freezes up. Mark's like, I was like, bro, act natural, dog. What are you doing? And the cop, I'm sure, sees this little kid, like, freezing up. Of course, pulls us over on my heart sank. And I remember the family meeting that happened when I got home. That's what's happening here. There's a family meeting. God calls Moses, Miriam, and Aaron. He's like, listen, Moses is my guy. What are, you, what are you talking about? And there was judgment. And, and the judgment you see in here, Miriam breaks out in leprosy. And it's wild. You, you guys want to see it? Anybody? Okay. Still, still with me? Uh, look at verse 9. Numbers 12, 9. The Lord was very angry with them, and he departed as the cloud moved from the tabernacle, there stood Miriam. Her skin was white as snow from leprosy. When Aaron saw what had happened to her, he cried out to Moses, oh, my master. And he changes his tune. Please don't punish us for this sin we've so foolishly committed. Don't let her be like a stillborn baby already decayed at birth. So Aaron was the high priest. Like one, Part of his job was to diagnose leprosy and deal with it. And so now his sister has it. He's like, oh man, I can't believe we've done that. He's crying out to Moses, Moses, will you do something about it? So look at verse 13. <laughs> Moses cried out to the Lord, oh God, I beg you, please heal her. And I was reading that, I was like, uh, how about we have Miriam have leprosy for a month or so? <laughs> Let her, you guys ever have that? You get bitterness when someone, and love it how Moses is a leader that goes, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pray for her right now. And it was, it was his humility, speaking of most humble guy, it was his humility that led to her healing. He was humble enough to say, God, 
hey, I'm not, vengeance is yours. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna try to defend myself. I'm not gonna make it right. It's all what you wanna do. It's beautiful. So practical challenge. Where's my practical challenge? People critic to critic, move it from critic to encourager. And so here, here's what I would say. Any leader in your life or anybody in your life, you, like you're going to work tomorrow, school tomorrow, that person, that guy, that gal, here's what I want, here's my challenge. Even if you can't, like you can't find a whole lot of stuff that's good, find one thing and verbally communicate an encouraging word to them. It might be your spouse. Like it might be like, they can't do anything right in this season and you're hypercritical about your spouse or your children. You got that crazy teenager that literally is getting into trouble every day. Find something good. Find that young man and go, you know, hey, you got a really rebellious spirit, which is good if you'll just rebel in the right way. You see how that twist happens? And that young man might feel respect as opposed to criticism. Okay, finally, let's talk about the coward. Um, Anybody had a season of being a coward in here? Raise your hand. Four, five, six, okay, good. I have. Chapter 13, I'm trying to give you the clip notes. God tells Moses to send 12 spies or 12 leaders to kind of like get into the land and preview it and kind of take a look at it before they take that that area, it's the land of Canaan, the land of promise. And he says this, hey guys, I want you to go sneak into the land, okay, keep it on the down low, covert mission, and here's what I want you to do. Tell me what the people are, are like, see what the place is like, the towns that they have, are they, do they, are they big fortified, like big walls, um, or are they just kind of like little, little tents with no walls around it? And then I want you to look at the, at the produce, like, what are the crops like? In fact, if you can bring back some Costco samples, like bring them back too. We wanna see what the fruit looks like. It happened to be harvest season. And so, what do they do? They go into the land as Moses charged. And when they came back though, this is where I want you to see, don't be that guy, when it come, don't be that girl when it comes to a coward. Look at verse 27. So Numbers 13, 27. Here's what the Bible says. So they go do it, they come back. This was their report to Moses. We entered the land you sent to us to explore and it is indeed a bountiful country. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. You know what kind of fruit? The Bible says that actually the grapes were so big that one cluster was so big, they had to put it on a pole and carry it with two dudes, two grown men for one bunch of grapes. So they're like carrying it, you know. Here they come back into the land. They're like, yo, it was the bomb. Check out this fruit. These grapes are like grapefruits. And 27, or 28 though, look at what it says. What does it say? Everybody say it. But, hey, it was great. And this land that you're giving us, God, is amazing. But the people living there are powerful. Their towns are large. They're fortified. We even saw Andre the giant there, the descendants of Anak. You see it? You, you got, God sends 12 dudes, 10 of them. This is the response for 10 of the spies, 10 of them. But you know, there's two guys, Joshua and Caleb. I want you to see what Joshua says. Look at verse 30. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as they stood before Moses. Isn't it interesting? The majority is so negative, Nancy. Oh, this country's going to hell and all that, this division. All. There's just this mass right now in so, it's social media. It's just, yes, it's 10 of them. We can't do it. We can't see revival. It's too far gone. It's like, it's like all of this stuff's happening. But Caleb tried to quiet the people as, he stood before, as they stood before Moses. Watch what he says. Let's go at once and take the land. He said, and then what does he say right here? We can conquer it. We can. Look at the next verse. You know what the response is from the 10? But the other men who had explored the land with him disagreed. What did they say? We, we can't. You see it? You, you, got, you got two dudes saying, yeah, we can. We're good. 
God told us to go do it. We got them. You know what the problem, and then you got the other 10, we can't. You know what the biggest problem is? It's perspective. And here's, let me just say this. If God has invited you into something, it doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what woman says. It doesn't matter how impossible it looks. If God has invited you into it, you go. You don't ask questions. Don't listen to the masses. Don't listen to the 10. The, the Debbie Downers, do not. You will miss out on your destiny. It's true. I'll tell you two stories and I'll let you go. Can you give me that attention? Two stories. I might have mentioned this before. I'm going to be just very vulnerable with you. When I was a senior in high school, I was recruited to play baseball and football. And one of the places I was recruited was Nebraska. And I grew up here. So Nebraska was like, you know, talking, oh, yeah, exactly. Like Tom Osborne was God. And like God came to recruit me. I'll never forget. He came into my living room. He's like, Todd, now we're going to give Scott Frost a scholarship. We want you to walk on. And I'm like, well, sorry, I, my parents can't pay, whatever. Iowa State gives me a full ride. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go there. I sign. I basically commit to Iowa State. Scott Frost ends up going to Stanford. So the running backs coach the next day comes to my high school and he says, hey, Todd. He's like, hey, Scott's going to Stanford. We got that scholarship for you. Will you come to Nebraska? And I said, sorry, man, I already signed with Iowa State. You know what was happening in my heart as I explored it over the years? I easily could have just said, man, thanks so much. I'll call Iowa State. I'm good. Live up my dream. Here, here was my problem. I was led by fear. Nebraska at the time was like in the late, remember in the, in the early 90s, they were like top five in the nation. And there was something in me that goes, if I'm the quarterback to lead them, what if I suck? What if I lead their team to the demise? But if I go to Iowa State, they already suck, so they, no one will ever know. <laughs> Can I be vulnerable with you? And here, here's, here's why I want to say that, because how many people today, the reason you're not walking into your destiny, into the promised land, is because fear. Oh, I, I don't know if I can do it. What if I fail? Guess what? You might fail. But if God's called you to do it, you do it. Years later, God gave me a chance of redemption. It was 15 years ago when God called me to, and my wife to leave Fort Lauderdale, Florida and start this church. I said, who, me? I can't do it. He's like, you're right. You can't, but God can. Go. 15 years ago. And about three years ago, he said, go build a building next to Elkhorn South. The dirt is going to be, I don't know, whatever it was, million, five, whatever it was. I said, say what? <laughs> you got that money? He's like, I do. Go. No, I can't do that. I can't. He's like, right, you can't, but I can. And I've called you to it. It was interesting too. About that time, I had about 80% of people around me saying, too big. There's giants in the land. There's no way you could ever do it. I had about 20% of people that said, Todd, I've prayed. I believe God's calling us to do it. Let's go. There was a young man that brought me to Panera. He said, the time's now. Let's go. I said, I can't do it. He's like, perfect, let's go, God can. <laughs> and it wasn't grapes that we've been seeing when it comes to fruit. You know what we've been seeing? Save souls, baby. Yeah. We just saw three <laughs> stories today. Talk about grapes. Carry that on a pole. And that's how I'll end, with a challenge. What's the practical challenge? Some in here right now, because of fear, have been stifled and complacent, and you're missing out. Can I just tell you, there's so much more for you in the promised land, and God says, come on, man, let's go. Someone say, send it. <laughs> say, hey, listen, if God's inviting you into it, he's going to do it. It's the bottom line. Amen. God, thanks for this word, this simple challenge today, and we pray, God, for a church We'd move away from complaining. We'd be encouragers, critics, moving away from this hypercritical out of jealousy or envy, and we would just be supporting the leaders around us, the greatest leaders or followers. Man, some in here, I just see like callings all over this place. I'm thinking of Gracie and 
how my heart skipped when she came out of the baptismal waters, something on her, and you, you have an amazing story that will blow her mind. I pray, God, we wouldn't walk away from your favor in this season, even when it seems impossible. I pray for our country. I pray for, for the Ukraine. I pray for um, all the divisiveness and all this hate. We, God, we pray. You're, you spoke the world into existence. There's nothing you can't do. And we're just gonna simply walk in, in your ways and trust you. Shift in us today. And we admit, God, we do. We get so paralyzed with fear at times. Forgive us, God. I don't wanna be that guy. Help us in Jesus' name. Before I say amen, I wanna maybe land the plane with an opportunity of response. As I was preparing for this message, I actually read Numbers 11, 12, 13, and then God moved me into 14, and he gave me this verse, and he said, end with this verse, and I just wanna read it for you. It's Numbers 14, 22. It says, not one of these people will ever enter that land. there was a repercussion for the unbelief. Actually, the 10 leaders were killed instantly, honestly. And the rest of the people, except for Joshua and Caleb, everybody that was 19, excuse me, 20 and up, all of them wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Not one of them. Can, can you put that verse back up for a second, please? And this is what I just wanted to say to Christians don't be that guy. <laughs> Don't be that gal. You, I want you to enter the land. Enter the land. And at the end of the verse, if you're not a Christian in here, it says this. Again, they have tested me by refusing to listen to my voice. And it's quite possible, maybe you're joining us for the first or second time. The fact is, God's been knocking on your heart for a while. I went for my pull. He's been knocking on your, your heart for a while. And for whatever reason, lack of belief or you have a warped version of God, you've been, you've been like hardening your heart. Can I just tell you, today is the day of salvation. The Bible says in Revelation 3 verse 20, if you hear my voice and you open your heart when I'm knocking, I will come in and I will dine with you. The opportunity is available. So let's stand together. The band's gonna play a song in a moment. It's gonna be your opportunity of literally coming up front. I'll lead you in a prayer. And the prayer is simple. God, I open up my heart. I don't wanna miss out on anything you have for me. I believe that Jesus paid the penalty for my sin. I wanna be born again. I, I, wanna, I wanna know beyond the shadow of a doubt when I die, I'm going to heaven. I want something different here. Today, I'm gonna to stop refusing to hear your voice. I'm gonna let you in and let you lead my life. If that's you, don't wait another day. Church, just begin to pray. God's not a God of headlocks. He's got his hand out. He's saying, come on, man, don't waste another day. As the band plays, you come forward as the church prays.
love it. There's time. We're in the two-minute drill. Anybody else, maybe from the nosebleeds, your time is now. There's an open opportunity. God says, come on, let's go. Let's go all in. Anybody else? Come on in, man. Good move. Good move. Love it. It's good. You know, it's interesting. I don't know who this is. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. Good. It's good. You know, it's interesting. Let me speak this word as people are coming. Come on. Anybody else? It's, you come on up if you want to come. So here's the word, and I'm not sure who this is for. God says, that might be for you. He, he says, all I'm looking for is humility and authenticity. And when we humble ourselves before God and we're just transparent with him, God, I can't do it. I need you. Forgive me. He meets you in this place and it's something different. Man. So if you guys are ready, I want to lead you in a prayer. It's a very simple, authentic, and humble prayer. And what happens is your sin, like goes 2,000 years back, back, back in the future goes to Jesus, he gives you his righteousness, his perfect life. If you guys are ready, just pray this prayer out loud after me. Say, Lord God, I open up my heart. I invite you inside to be my God, to be my Savior, to be my friend. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. I've decided today follow you, Jesus. From this day forward, I'm yours. I'm all in. (laughs) Fill me with your spirit and lead me in a life of love for your glory and to help a ton of people. (laughs) Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Proud of you, dude. Proud of you. Love it. Now listen, don't go anywhere quite yet. To my right, to your left, there's Josh and Christy. They just want to put a Bible in your hand and just pray for you in just a a couple more minutes. So if you can, head their direction right now. Let's give it up for them one last time. Proud of you guys. Come on, man. Wow. And listen, if you have any need of prayer at all, Find the cross right over here after this last song. Let us pray with you. Have a great week. God bless you guys. Thanks again for checking out this video. If you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening here at Love Church, hit the subscribe button or download the Love Church app, which is free on any app store. Have a great week as you continue to experience God's best for your life.